Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Mini Sky tonight. So here we are wrapping up the summertime as summer starting to end and the school year is going to start to begin soon. I wanted to show you some of the constellations and planets and things that you can see just before the school year starts. So I'm using the program known as Stellarium. It's a free planetarium program, and I'll leave a link in the description below to where you can download it for any device of yours for free. And they constantly update it. In fact, just this recent update, they added a few more satellites, including the new Starlink satellites. So if you want to try to track those as they're being launched, go ahead and check out the link in the description below. So what can you see roughly around about August? So towards the western horizon, just sh shortly after sunset, you'll see an incredibly bright star. It's the planet Venus. So in the early morning and early evening sky, you should be able to see this bright planet. And if you have a pair of binoculars or a small telescope, you can zoom in on it to see some of the unique features of the planet. It'll be an incredibly bright disk in your telescope. But nonetheless, let's set the sun to see a few different constellations that we can see. So in the early in the evening sky, if you face towards the south, you can see this kind of hook-shaped constellation. In the Disney movie Moana, it was often referred to as Maui's fish hook. In fact, even the Polynesians call it that. But to us, we call it the constellation Scorpius, the scorpion. But honestly, I like to call it the fish hook because it does kind of look like a hook of some kind. The bright star in the constellation Scorpius, which lies right here, is called Antares. It literally means not Mars, because it has a similar color to that of Mars itself. Nonetheless, right next to the constellation Scorpius is this teapot-shaped constellation. This is the constellation Sagittarius. Now, he's supposed to represent an archer or a half-man, half-horse kind of guy, but I don't see that in him. I see a teapot. So if you want to use the asterism of a teapot, you are more than welcome to. Because here I see the handle, here's the lid, here's the spout. In fact, let's set the stars just a little further because I wanted to show you something really unique. Notice that the spout kind of points towards this little star right here. Right next to the star, as you kind of can see, is this faint fuzzy cloud. On a clear moonless night, you can see the Milky Way galaxy, our galaxy seen edge on. And Sagittarius points towards the heart of our galaxy. So over here towards the eastern horizon, roughly around about 9, 9.30, you'll see these two bright stars that are closer to the horizon. But as the evening progresses, in fact, these two planets are much easier observed as the night goes on, roughly around about, say, 10 or 10.30. These two stars are actually planets. This is the planet Saturn and the planet Jupiter. In fact, let's change the time here to when it's easier to observe. So here we are at 1030. And the eastern horizon, roughly around about 1030, you can see the two planets, Saturn and Jupiter. In fact, let's check out Saturn. So the great thing about this program is that you can zoom in on particular objects to check out unique things. So let's check it out. So even with a pair of binoculars or a small telescope, this is what you would see in your view. You would see the bright planet Saturn with its disk and a few little stars around it. Those stars are actually some of the moons of Saturn. Currently to date, Saturn has over 83 moons, thanks to the Cassini mission. But here we are looking at this beautiful planet in the early evening sky. 
And Saturn is often referred to as the Lord of the Rings because it has this beautiful ring system unlike any other planet in our solar system. Now, all gas giant planets do have rings. It's just Saturn's is the most epic. It's an incredibly long ring system. So like if you were to imagine that these rings were solid and they were a racetrack of some kind, it would take you five years to make one lap running with your best running shoes. So it's pretty long. But for as long as they are, they're exceptionally thin. The average thickness of the rings to go from the top to the bottom of the rings is the same distance as the two goalposts on a football field. So for something that's so exceptionally long, it's really thin. And the rings aren't solid at all. In fact, they're composed of particles, some as tiny as a grain of sand to boulders as big as a house. If you want to learn more of some of the details about Saturn, believe it or not, I did a video discussing about this unique planet. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link up here and you can check out some of the features of the planet Saturn. And of course, the second star, star or planet, Wanderer, is over here, and that's the planet Jupiter. So let's zoom in on Jupiter to check it out. So these four little stars that are over here are actually the moons of Jupiter or the Galilean moons, because they first were discovered by Galileo Galilei. Now, Jupiter is referred to as the largest planet in the solar system. In fact, Jupiter itself is so big that if you were to open up Jupiter, you could put all the other planets inside Jupiter. Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars could all fit inside Jupiter comfortably. It's that big. But one of the most prominent features of the, in the cloud tops of Jupiter is this big red spot right here. It's properly named the Great Red Spot. It's a huge storm in the cloud tops of Jupiter. And don't let its appearance fool you. It's such a prominent feature that it's existed for thousands of years and people have observed it for a long period of time. And the winds have been clocked there at over 400 miles per hour. And the storm itself is so big that sometimes it could be big enough to fit all the rocky planets inside of it. Currently the mission that's going on around Jupiter right now is the uh, mission that's kind of led here from San Antonio, Juno. And we're discovering some new unique features. In fact, if you wanna check out the video I did about Jupiter, I'll leave a link up here as well, and you can check out the planet Jupiter up close and personal. And speaking of the Galilean moons, believe it or not, I also did a video discussing the Galilean moons. So if you would like to check out these four bright, unique individual moons, I'll leave a link up here as well. And you can check out the four moons that basically change our view of our solar system. All right, so let's look for a couple other different constellations. Kind of a little higher up in the south east, eastern sky, you'll see these three bright stars that kind of form a triangle. This is what is known as the Summer Triangle or the Navigator's Triangle. But these three stars are each in a different constellation. This top star right here is called Vega, which is a part of the constellation Lyra, the Lyre. L-Y-R-E, not L-I-A-R. It's a harp of some kind. The bottom left star he, here is called Deneb, which is a part of the constellation Cygnus, the swan. I sometimes call it the Northern Cross. The bottom right star right here is called Altair, which is a part of the constellation Aquila, the eagle. But believe it or not, 
there are two unique objects hidden within this area. And the constellation Lyra, the harp, you'll have to bear with me because trying to get this little object on the program is kind of difficult. Hidden between the two stars of the constellation Lyra, the lyre, is this object right here. So just bear with me as I try to click on it. There we go. So between these two stars, if you have a really good telescope, focus right between these two stars and you'll see this object. This is what is referred to as the ring nebula. It's a telltale sign of what will happen to our star when it passes away. As our star gets older, as it goes through the fusion process, it's gonna start running out of energy. So what will happen is it will collapse down its core to a tiny little star known as a white dwarf, and it will puff out its outer shell, creating this beautiful ring or this kind of cocoon around it, if you will. And it just leaves a tiny little core remnant of the star in the center. And that's what we see here. That little white star right there is the core remnant of the star that once was. Another unique feature is that in the constellation Cygnus at the tip, the head of the swan itself is a unique double star. Now, most stars come in double or multiple star systems. It's just our star, the sun, just happens to be unique where it's a single star. Now, in this particular case, for Al this star called Albirio, Albirio is a beautiful double star because it has two stars that are in different color contrasts. So most double star systems have stars that are similar in color. These two stars, however, that orbit one another are different colors completely. One is a deep gold and the other one is a bright blue. Hence why sometimes it's been nicknamed the Cub Scout star. Nonetheless, starting to rise in the east, let's progress time just a tad further because there's one unique object I wanted to show you guys. In the eastern horizon, you'll see this big, huge square kind of constellation. This constellation is known as Pegasus, the cosmic winged horse. Now, I don't see a cosmic winged horse out of this. I like to refer to this constellation as what the famous cowboy poet Baxter Black called it. He called it the great baseball diamond in the sky because beginning of the baseball season, it starts to rise in the east and come World Series time, it's high in the sky. Kind of like a stellar commemoration to the all-American pastime. And you kind of can see a baseball diamond out of this. So here's home, here's first, here's second, here's third, here's the pitcher. You got the catcher and the umpire back here and you got a guy as shortstop. So you got your field. But if you go from home to first, past the right fielder, past the center fielder, and walk out of the stadium, you kind of see this little fuzzy patch right here on a clear moonless night. That fuzzy patch is the farthest thing you can see with your unaided eye. It is the Andromeda galaxy, our sister galaxy. Yeah. There we go and it's 2.5 million light years away and you're able to see it on a clear moonless night. The Andromeda galaxy is referred to our Sixer galaxy because she's relatively close to us, a little larger in size, but she's also a spiral galaxy like we are. And these little two fuzzy things that are in orbit around the Andromeda galaxy are also galaxies, they're dwarf galaxies. So these are some of the constellations and planets that you can see in the early evening sky. So if you have any questions or comments, leave it down in the comments below.
if there's a topic you would love for me to cover over, leave it down in the comments as well. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, never stop learning.